I'm tired of being stopped when I talk about this stuff. Um, so, and I'm getting this name Malik coming up to me, and increasingly I'm certain that this is actually Malik Obama that this is re referring to. And Malik Obama is a big fat question mark. Who the hell is this guy? Like, I looked up online and it looks like they were best, Barack and Malik were best men at each other's wedding. They only first met in 1985, according to Wikipedia. So they apparently had a fairly close relationship or, you know, a, not a close relationship, but they got together after they got together, they were close for a little while, close enough to be best men at each other's wedding. But then clearly things have gone south since then. But um, you would think that Malik Obama would be a really uh, interesting person to cover, like, for example, by a newspaper or something like that. Because I can, I, you know, I can remember the Carter years and how fascinated everyone was with um, Carter's brother. What was his name? Billy. But Malik isn't getting much attention at all. And Malik is weird because he's supporting Trump, like, heavily. Uh and anyway, I don't know I don't know much about the Obama family. Clearly it's a very large and complex family. However, I looked up a little bit about them today and I'm going to do that family tree next. I looked up a little bit about them today on um Wikipedia and I see that um Barack Obama has a grandmother from the with the last name of Payne. So very possibly linked to Michael Payne's stepfather. I think what I said yesterday, the other day, I don't know if I can post this video because I was pretty passionate at the time. I, first of all, I'm aware that my feelings about President Obama might be disproportionate to, but I'm not sure they are disproportionate because, um, and this isn't, I'm trying not to be judgmental, but this is a serious business. The man um, essentially put his foot on my neck so that I could be, um, skewered at this time, right? If he had helped me when I had asked him for help, we wouldn't be here today. Or if he had given somehow better guidance than he did. Now, I'm not saying this is his fault. It looks to me like he's in a squeeze also. And so that's what I want to kind of bring out. This is why this needs to come out as difficult as it may be. And, you know, as imperfect as it may be, it needs to come out what's going on because people need to understand our leaders, and I don't know how many of them are like this, are fundamentally compromised. So that when asked to do the most basic thing that they are sworn to do and uphold, which is the Constitution, they can't do it. They either won't or they can't, but I think it's looking more like can't. Um, so there's actually, we think we're in a democratic society and even, you know, um, President Obama would say over and over, this is a democracy, but he had to have known as much as anybody that it's rigged and that these leaders are actually being chosen ahead of time and they're being chosen for different reasons and then they're being controlled once they're in office. And this is bad. This is exactly, in fact, it's the exact thing that the founding fathers were so concerned about. Probably so concerned about because they knew that this kind of stuff was going on. But now it's going on at a higher level of sophistication. Now it's going on with people having implants in their heads and their hearts. So this is what I want to say about um, President Obama. I think he is linked to my family. I think he's linked to the Bresca family. I suspect the Bresca family had direct interactions with the Obamas um, in Africa. Um, and maybe there's other links going on since there's a pain link as well. But um, I want to show the dream that I think is related to President Obama from 1988. And this is when I lived in Minneapolis. I was living um, in, uh, this, let's see. This dream is from, this dream is from March 28th, 1988. So at this time, I just looked up on Wikipedia, President Obama was living in Chicago at this time, and I was living in Minneapolis. Um, I'm trying to remember if I was living in St. Paul or Minneapolis, actually. I was living in St. Paul in March of 88. I moved to Minneapolis in September. Okay, so I was living in St. Paul. 
which is just across the river, basically. Okay, so um, this is the dream. Okay, well, um, first I'm going to read the context. Okay, so right before I have this dream at 10.30 p.m., I'm talking about Michael, okay, coming back from Thailand. Blah, 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 blah. I hate reading this stuff now, now that I know what kind of person he is. But um, nonetheless, I did write it. And this thing here, so um, this stuff about, you know, looking forward to Mike coming back from Thailand. This is important because Brett was hit by a car on June um, 27th, 1988. And Mike Payne was directly involved in that. So he was back and forth. He came back and then he was not around. And I don't even know if he was in Minneapolis when Brett was hit. I didn't hear about Brett being hit maybe till like a couple weeks afterwards. At least it was a little while afterwards. I think it might have been a couple of weeks. Um, so Mike either was... He might have been with me when it happened. He might not have been with me when it happened. Um, I don't think that he was with me when I heard about it. He might have called me and told me about it. He was So he was either in Humboldt County at the time or right afterwards. Okay, so that's the context with Brett. Um... And so now here I write this interesting sent this interesting paragraph here. All I want is power. That's silly. I got plenty of power. I don't need to go around breaking hearts to prove my power. Besides, why should you have to seduce a man when you care? Why should you seduce a man you care for if you don't love him? Why not seduce the man you love? I think this has to do with sexual power I'm talking about. Michael has a beautiful body. I can't wait to touch him again. I'm hungry for Michael's body. So here's what I think about this sentence. Okay, I'm totally unaware of this. But power and body are both coded language, so it's beautiful. Um, so beautiful is, is blood, E, which I think stands for, I think E actually stands for power. Um, but something big, like electricity or elephant or something like that. Blood, E, architect, U-turn, T, I, finger, U-turn, left. So, um, it's about, you know, keeping me, the word beautiful is about keeping me imprisoned. The word body, I believe, is about um, a body of people, right? Human beings, like a group of human beings. The word power, I believe, is, you know, it's about power, but it's about a specific kind of power. I think it's more, more it's about power that is like, um, like a top-down kind of power. Like, um, you know, if you're at the top of a pyramid, you have a lot of power to, like, control a lot of people. I think that's what power, and so when you say things like white power, it's the idea of oppression, really. I think that's what a power is linked to. It's not what I meant here, really, but... It's what I don't want this. This I don't want this journal to get wet, but it might. Um, anyway, so that's power, and breaking hearts. Well, now I know that we they call us the heart, but I also now know that we have implants in our heart, and I also know that some of the implants went into my body in around '88. I think some of the implants went into my back around 1988. I know I already had implants in my back as a child. But I think more went in while I was living in either St. Paul or Minneapolis. Um, is it possible that the heart implant went in at that time? And that would be significant. Because Minneapolis is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of um, the, the, the corruption with regards to all of this. I had to come inside because it's <coughs> getting really wet out there. Okay, so um, when I say Minneapolis, I mean... I'm basically using shorthand. I mean Minneapolis and or St. Paul, even though they are two different cities and maybe even in two different counties, I'm not sure. But um, for me, you know, I, when I was living in St. Paul, I was living in the Midway area of St. Paul. And um, after that, I lived in Dinkytown, Minneapolis. So when I say, I usually tend to say Minneapolis, but I mean both, either or both towns. Okay, so um, so I'm writing here about power. I'm writing here about Michael Payne and his quote-unquote beautiful body. And so then I go to sleep and I have this dream. 
Okay, finally, I think it's my brother, <coughs> mother, and me. Finally, we make it to island. After rowing erratically from plane on a little boat you have to stand on. Someone comes to greet us, bringing an American flag. The cloth has a floral background. And so there's my illustration of that. My head is covered with the flag, and I think, I wonder if one was taken prisoner and then executed with a flag draped over one's head. It wouldn't be so bad, because wearing the flag, you get the feeling you're part of something larger than yourself. I'm going to interject right here and say that um, this is not the way I feel. I don't think it was ever the way I felt, but this is you know, a message sent to me in a dream. The man, let's see, so. The man then hugs us, a big, beautiful, brown, bare-chested man. Then he puts out his hand, and no one knows what to do, but I do. I shake it. And it shakes in quotes. He shakes hands a little differently, though, and I let him show me. This is Malaysia, I think. My mother and brother are there. My mother comes and laughs and pats him on the chest like he's so amusing and cute. I just flinch with pain. An embarrassment. I wake up. Um, let's see, what's after this context-wise? I write a little, I meant to write a little later, but I write a little ladder. It's not even ladder. A little later. No, I don't even write that. I write a little later. I said, what does a little later look like? I write a little later, but I draw a little ladder and it's 10 o'clock. So interestingly, I've changed all of a sudden now I'm writing 228.88 when it's actually 328.88. All right. Just to confirm that it is actually March. Premonitions. I wish that I uh, really understood back then that I was actually having premonitions of different sorts. Um, well, let's see. We can tell it was March. Okay, it was definitely March. Okay, so um, so there's this. Okay, so I think this is something to do with Obama, and I think that um, if you look at Obama's presidential portrait. He's in a floral background. He's sitting on a chair with like a, a total background of bushes and flowers behind him. And I think he's got something one something on each foot, near each foot, that was is significant. Anyway, um, so he, as a child, he lived in Hawaii. Like I said, when I had this dream, he was in Chicago. Um, So bare chested, I think, I don't know the exact meaning of chest. I think that it means like there's something in a chest, like a chest that you keep something in, something hidden in, maybe maybe money, like a treasure chest. And bare, I think is a double meaning, like bear, um, B-E-A-R. And the bears are people linked to universities and things who do assassinations and medical attacks. And looking at Obama's family history, I can see that his family has all the signs of having been victims of medical attacks. Um, poisonings, car accidents, all these things that are um, linked to um, covert assassinations. So, so all kinds of stuff is showing up and linking um, the Obama family to this, this whole thing um, that I'm linked to, which is... Um, trauma-based mind control um, and everything that goes along with it. Um, so why Malaysia? And I don't have all the answers to that. However, there's something to do with my pen pals. I had three pen pals, as it, and I don't even know how I ended up getting these pen pals. Um, and this was maybe junior high age, around 1980. 
One pen pal lived in Malaysia. Her name was Josephine Song Hoi Ling, and she was Chinese. So she was ethnically Chinese, but she lived in Malaysia. One pen pal lived in Kenya, Nairobi. Um, her name was Rena K. Shaw. And one pen pal lived in Bad Mitterndorf, Austria, and her name was Monica Geiger. So I had three pen pals, one in Austria, one in Malaysia, and one in Kenya. So there's some type of link in here between, I think, um, Josephine Song, who was Chinese, living in Malaysia, and Rena K. Shaw, who lived in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, <clears throat> I was embarrassed when my mom handed Mike Payne all that change because I thought she was being disrespectful of him and now I know that she was basically selling me to him symbolically. Um, So this thing about being assassinated with an American flag draped over your head, it suggests to me that they were plans. You know, it's weird, okay, to have this come to me in 1988 and then in 2013, 2014, um, Barack Obama's president of the United States and I need help from him and he shoves me down. Um, so that this here suggests that this is like, either it was planned out ahead of time, something like this, or the plan that, or what ended up happening was modeled partly on my dream, or both. But I think it's, I think it's probably a little bit of both. So I think it was this idea that they knew that they could um, bring or believed or wanted to try bringing Obama up uh, into power in the United States and um, control him so that if I, you know, needed his help, I wouldn't get it. And... Um, He probably also has implants around his heart and other parts of his body. So <clears throat> that's what I think the meaning of this dream is. And then another place where I think Obama shows up before he's president, and it's probably actually a few places, because it sounds to me like he's actually um, was somebody that was a um, subject of a lot of focus of this mind control system. But another place that he appears in a fictionalized form is in the Frasier series, which is about psych psychologists in Seattle, Washington. And it's the character of Cam Winston. And the character of Cam Winston is sort of like in a mirror of Obama um, in that Obama's mother was white and his father was black and Cam Winston's mother is black and father is white. And there's an episode of Frasier where Cam Winston and then think about the name Cam Winston. The name Winston comes up a lot in this too. Um, in fact, there's Winston in that movie called Broken Flowers, um, right? There's a character called Winston. Um, and Cam, like camera, right? And wins a ton, right? So somebody who's linked to the camera, this is the trafficking situation around us, which I understand is used for um, progress, professional progress, not just not just making money and getting new cars and stuff, but also professional progress, uh, education. Harvard seems really linked into this, and also probably Stanford. Um, I mean, among other schools, I'm sure there's a lot of schools. Uh, and University of Washington is is associated with this because um, the Obamas 
you know, and that, that never, I read on Wikipedia, and there isn't really an explanation for why this is, that Barack Obama's mother brought him to the University of Washington in Seattle when he was one year old, which it would have been, I believe, at the time my dad was attending school at the University of Washington. Um, because his father was going to school, I think, in Hawaii at that time. So... Um, there's some big question marks there, but I don't think it's really a question mark for me so much as just, okay, I think that just says to me that there was, um, he was subject to focus, uh, it's mind control system. That's weird. Oh, somebody just maybe left a package outside. I just heard a bump and there's nobody here. Anyway, um, let's see if that's what actually happened. Yes. So, um, what this means is that there are, there's people controlling the president, right? There's somebody controlling... You know, maybe not everything the president does, but certain consequential things and things blink to me. And this link to Malaysia and Josephine's song is interesting because there's some kind of thing, there's some kind of interaction with Obama and China, the leaders of China. I'm under the impression that, in a sense, the leaders... I mean, there's various people trying to hold this situation hostage. Some of them are Americans, but some of them are not Americans, and I think some of them are Chinese. And um, that's a huge problem also. The idea that um, a foreign country could tell America what to do with Americans and that a foreign country... You know, regardless of what American, you know, I mean, the issue with American citizens is another issue, but um, there is a constitution. And so that a country like China could tell the United States of America to withhold constitutional rights from an American citizen and that the United States of America would do it. That's a serious deal. And I know that this group operates with a lot of blackmail and a lot of um, trickery and things like that. So, you know, I don't know how many of the implants in my body are accessible by foreign countries. I do know that people, foreign people like Louise Koch, somehow do have access to me. And it doesn't make any sense to me how this would happen. I think this, this group has convinced the United States government that um, they are more powerful than them. So, you know, there's a lot of serious problems here. Uh, and an even more serious problem came out in my dream last night. So I guess we'll go there next. <laughs>